hearts through his word. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for our church family. And I just pray for those who are visiting that you would touch them in a special way today. That you would bless each person uh, this Christmas season. And everyone that walks in these doors, they'd feel your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Hard to believe Star Wars is back. <clears throat> it's out. How many have seen it already? Uh, quite a few of you. Uh, there'll be more people seeing Star Wars than there will be seeing a nativity scene this year, unfortunately. Uh, there'll be more people. They'll break records <clears throat> going to that movie. Uh, the Force Be With You, right? And, um, and so 1977, it was May 25th, three days after my first anniversary, Karen and I, uh, when that movie came out. How many saw the first one? <clears throat> that was quite a movie. George Lucas, a uh, pretty creative writer, and that was quite a, quite a movie to see that. The thing is, <clears throat> it has a lot of truth to it, doesn't it? Uh, a battle between good and evil. And that's what the Bible talks about. The, the Bible from front to, be, uh, to the end is a story about the battle between good and evil. And we see it, it happened all the way back in the garden. And so we're going <clears> to <throat> look at that. And you might say, well, what does that have to do with Christmas? It has a lot to do with Christmas because Christmas is all about God's kingdom. And we're uh, talking about his kingdom and the kingdom principles and and, and what a wonderful, wonderful God to allow us to be a part of his kingdom. <clears throat> Isaiah 9, 6 <clears throat> says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, says the government will be upon his shoulders and it will be an everlasting government without end that Jesus will reign. What an exciting <clears throat> blessing to be a part of God's kingdom. And sometimes we take it for granted. And on this earth, <clears throat> that's why Jesus had to remind us in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And previously he talked about, of course, uh, why do you worry about tomorrow? Why do you worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear? All of these things. He, he says, you don't have to worry about that. Your heavenly Father knows everything you need. Jesus talks a lot about kingdom principles. And being a part of this kingdom, <clears throat> there are kingdom principles we are to live by. And that's what that little baby, Jesus, came to do, was to set up an everlasting kingdom. Hard to believe. And I love this song when Mary uh, looked at the little baby, and did you know you were looking at the face of what? God. What a beautiful song to remind us. This was Emmanuel. Jesus Christ was God with us, born in a manger. <clears throat> and so Christmas, a very interesting time of the year. Uh, Jesus talks about these two kingdoms. <clears throat> he talks about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. He describes them. He uh, shares with his disciples about them. He, he tells us the kingdom of God is within us. And Christ, when he comes into our life, uh, we become a part of of God's everlasting kingdom. And pretty exciting to be a part of that kingdom. And it says we're going to reign with him in that kingdom forever. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to that. Matthew 12. And we'll start with <clears throat> verse 18. Look at my servant whom I have chosen. <clears throat> he is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed <clears throat> or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be the hope of all the world. <clears throat> After Jesus shared that, of course, a prophetic word that was fulfilled in him, 
says, Then a demon possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, Could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, No wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Here again, we're seeing two kingdoms here, aren't we? Uh, vying against each other. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, Any kingdom <clears throat> divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. Two kingdoms here. <clears throat> and if I am empowered by Satan, what about your exorcists? They cast out demons too, so they will, be, they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Two kingdoms here. Two kingdoms. For who, is, for who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger. Someone who could tie him up and plunder his house. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Here we see Jesus telling a story about two kingdoms. <clears throat> the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Uh, Exodus 6, 1, interesting verse. It says, the Lord told Moses, when Pharaoh feels the force of my hand, my strong hand, he'll let you go. Anyway, the force. Uh, kind of a theme in Star Wars, isn't it? The force be with you. Yeah, that's right. The force be with you. Uh, the force. Interesting what the Bible says about the force. And God is omnipotent. And so he's all powerful. You talk about the force. Uh, the force is with us if we're Christians. And so that force is amazing. Somebody uh, brought this up to me. It's, uh, it's a light saver, I guess. Is that what it is? Oh, that's right. Now, the force is with us as Christians. And what is our force? Here you go, Josh. The force be with you, brother. Anyway, uh, the force is our Bible. The Word of God. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. The living Word, right? The Word of God. Powerful. It's mighty. This, this Word of God is unbelievable. And this is the weapon. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds of what? Of Satan's kingdom. He's got a kingdom. He's got warriors. We have Jedis, right? Okay. Christian Jedis, that's, uh, we're, we're fighting in a battle, aren't we? And so whether you realize it or not, you are in a kingdom if you're a Christian. You're a kingdom warrior. You're one of God's warriors fighting against evil. And so God wants us to realize that this force is amazing. Another verse that talks about the force uh, is in, uh, let's see, Isaiah 11, 1, and then verse 4 or 5. Uh, 4 and 5, it says, The earth will shake at the force of his word. The word became flesh, it says, and dwelt among us. It says, As many as received him, he, became, he gave us the power to become the sons of God. That's when we become a part of a new kingdom. And sometimes, people in that kingdom, it's like when you go to a different country... They have different customs, don't they? You go to a different uh, country, and they live a little different. Uh, different mores, different things that you have to adjust to. I'm sure, Toshi, when you go to India, it's a lot different than America, isn't it? When you work in India, a lot different than what we're used to. Um, there's different customs around this world. And <clears throat> God said, we become part of a kingdom. But you know what? That, ki that kingdom has different customs than the kingdom we were used to. A different way to live life than what we were used to in the old kingdom of darkness. 
And there's quite a contrast in these two kingdoms. Uh, look with me at Revelation. It talks about these kingdoms again. Uh, for all the way from the garden, way back in the garden, when Satan, of course, disguised himself and came in the form of a serpent, and he, test, he tested and tempted Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She fell prey to the temptation. She was created in God's image. She was created with free will. She had a choice to either honor God and his kingdom principle, obedience, or to be disobedient and follow in Satan's way, who had been cast out of heaven, uh, out of God's presence, uh, because he wanted to be equal to the Almighty. He didn't want God to call the shots. <clears throat> so as you're involved in God's kingdom, you need to come under his authority. That's why they call him King Jesus, right? Because he is the King of Kings. And so you have to be willing to come under his authority. Revelation, in, in Genesis, it says, <clears throat> uh, the Satan has bruised his heel, but the woman's seed will crush his head. And that's the seed of woman, the Mary, when baby Jesus was born, Jesus would put a death blow to Satan and his kingdom. And that's what took place. <clears throat> Way back in Genesis, it was full, it prophesied what would happen after Jesus came, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. Now in Revelation, uh, the seventh seal, uh, we look at this here in Revelation chapter 11, the seventh trumpet uh, brings terror on planet earth. Uh, the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the what? Kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign how long? Forever and ever. Just like Isaiah uh, chapter uh, Isaiah 9 that we started with, uh, that wonderful verse where Jesus was born, that little baby was born in Isaiah 9, 6. And the government would be upon his shoulders, and it'd be a world without end, an everlasting kingdom that Christ would set up. And so this is revelation that was given to John on the Isle of Patmos, and he's seeing the future, what's going to take place. The 24 elders sitting on their thrones before God fell with their faces to the ground and worshipped him and said, We give thanks to you, Lord God, the Almighty, the one who is and who always was. For now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were filled with wrath, but now the time of your wrath has come. It is time to judge the dead and reward your servants, the prophets, as well as your holy people, and all who fear your name. You're in this verse if you're a Christian, by the way. If you're a Christian, this is you. You're going to be rewarded. That's what God says here. And you will reign with Christ. It says, from the least to the greatest, it is time to destroy all who have caused destruction on the earth. <clears throat> then in heaven, the temple of God was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen inside the temple. The ark, you met, how many saw it? Raiders of the Lost Ark? These, these producers get a lot of their info from us, okay? Uh, they just look at the Bible and they write stories. But these, this Ark of the Covenant, pretty amazing. Uh, it could be seen inside the temple. Lightning flashed, thunder crashed and roared. And there was an earthquake and a terrible hailstorm. Things are going to happen on this earth. You read Revelation, you, you get a picture of what is going to take place to destroy and judge this world when, when Christ is about to return in his glory. It's an amazing picture, but again, it's nice to be on a winning team, isn't it? How many like being on a winning team? I get tired of being a Vikings fan. I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but uh, it's not, and I'm not giving up on them. But we are on a winning team. Jesus has already went, and he's won the battle. Now we've got to keep fighting with him in his army. And, and here we get a picture of what God's going to do. Then uh, verse, or chapter 12, 
uh, starting with verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. Those angels are demonic spirits. They were cast out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called what? The devil or Satan is the one deceiving the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last. Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. The one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. What a story. And people read this. They can't understand it. They wonder, what on earth is this talking about? We've challenged our church family. We have Bible reading programs for you, for every one of you to get in the Bible. <clears throat> Before I read the Bible, I ask the Lord to speak to my heart. We've talked about it. You can go to our past sermons. We've talked about what we're doing as a church family. Start reading your Bible. It's, it's how we're strengthened in God's kingdom. If you're not reading this, you're not growing the way you should as a Christian. Everyone needs to be involved in reading the Scripture, memorizing the Scripture, and most importantly, practicing in daily life what it says, all of the kingdom principles that it has for us. It's, we're in a different kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord. And it's quite a contrast, isn't it? Uh, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, right? Uh, light versus darkness. Humility versus... Come on. Pride, that's right. Uh, these are kingdom principles. Uh, Satan is very arrogant, prideful, all of the things, of course the kingdom of darkness. So when you're practicing pride, you're practicing one of the enemy's principles in his kingdom, not the kingdom of God. When you practice humility, it's a kingdom principle. You'll read from the, the scriptures, do a word study on humility, and you'll see how important it is to be humble. Part of God's kingdom. People need to be humble. Humility. The humble will inherit the earth, right? The meek, the humble will inherit the earth. And so, very important. <clears throat> uh, humility versus pride. Mercy versus judgment. Faith versus doubt. Love versus hate. Unity versus division. Forgiveness versus resentment. Bitterness in Satan's kingdom. Patience versus anger, right? Right? Any of you been just really angry this week? Nobody's raising their hand. A few of you. Yeah, anger. Did you know that anger is not from God's kingdom, right? Um, there's times it says be angry and sin not. So you can say, well, okay, why does it say that? Oh, it says be angry and sin not. There's a things to be angry at. But don't sin with it. Be angry and sin not. And, and these are different parts of the kingdom. Forgiveness versus resentment. Patience versus anger. Greed versus generosity. The list is endless. Uh, Satan hates you. He wants you to be a part of his kingdom. And you might say, well, pastor, what does this have to do with Christmas? It has everything to do with Christmas. Because Jesus died to set up his kingdom. And he wants us as Christians to live according to his kingdom principles. That's why it's important for you to be reading the Bible. <clears throat> Forgiveness, so important, isn't it? Being a part of the kingdom. I've talked to so many people that are full of resentment because of heartaches in their life. They're full of resentment. And so 
Christ has set us free. Here's two different things that happen when you're part of a certain kingdom. In Satan's kingdom, it says, it tells us what he does, what his purpose is. John 10, 10, the thief, and that's another name of Satan, comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's what Satan comes to do. He comes to steal your peace. He comes to steal your purity. He comes to kill your children. He hates them. He comes to destroy them. He wants your sons and daughters in hell. He wants you in hell. He wants your marriage to break up. He wants you to be odd, at odds with that, everyone. He wants you to have resentment towards people who have hurt you. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. How do you have abundant life? By following God's principles, by yielding to his lordship, by being a part of his kingdom and practicing kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. They're all around us. Kingdom principles. And so God wants us uh, to, sh to live in that. Now, Satan, of course, bound us with sin. Sin entered the world. <clears throat> and, and Satan was trying to destroy God's wonderful creation. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Very important scripture. It says now. So now then, now that you're part of God's kingdom, okay, you're living in God's kingdom, you're a Christian, you've received Christ, he's forgiven your sins. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. I want to tell you, if something's going to make you happy, that should make you happy. That should bring you real joy because when you stand before the judge, of all mankind, Jesus Christ is the judge. He'll judge every person that was ever created on planet Earth. We will stand before him and give account. And when you stand before him, you stand. When John stands, when Josh stands, when, when uh, Rick stands, when you stand before him, there will be no condemnation if you are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful to know? No condemnation. Man, when you stand before a judge, how many of you stand, have ever stood before a judge? <laughs> so anyway, so, you know, you stand before a judge. I stood before a judge one. Back when I was in high school, I was bummed out, stuff going on in our house, and I was a Christian. I was going to go up and pray at the old, the old New Central up on the hill, and I stopped at Masaba and 6th Avenue East and flashing red light at 1 in the morning and I didn't see anything. I, it was a rolling stop, all of a sudden siren and lights. And I thought, what on earth? Pulled me over. I lost <coughs> my license. My mother, we had to go to court. And she's just crying when I stood before the judge. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Crying to the judge. Mom, mom. You know, when we stand before Jesus, it doesn't matter if mom cries or not, right? <clears throat> it's not going to get us in. And that's why we need to make that decision to follow Christ and be a part of his kingdom. But there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who belong to him. And because you belong to him, the power, <clears throat> boy, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you. The power of God's word. I tell you, you take it out and however you use that lightsaber, this is it. But we know how to use the word of God. You need to get in the word of God. It says demons tremble at his name. And, and so we need to get into the word of God to learn how to pray, to learn how to live in his kingdom. You have to be a student of God's word. And if you're not, you're not growing. So it's it freed us from the power of life and death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in the body 
like we have, the son in a body like the bodies we sinners have, that little baby was born by that virgin Mary. And in the body, God declared to end sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Kingdom principles. We give to bless others. <clears throat> if a seed doesn't die, it won't bear fruit. Jesus gave his life, he died. A kingdom principle, we have to die to self as Christians, to our own desires for God's kingdom and his principles for others. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fulfilled, fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. This is so important as a kingdom Christian to learn how to follow the Spirit. Are you following the Spirit? If you're a Christian, the Spirit lives in you. Christ lives in you. The Holy Spirit's in you if you're a Christian. <clears throat> and, and so he says we need to follow the Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, very important for all of us. You want to know if you're dominated by the sinful nature or by Christ? This is going to answer the question for you. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. So if you're thinking of sinful things throughout the day, if you're looking at a woman and lusting at her at work continually, if you're lusting after people, if you're thinking dirty thoughts, if you're envious of other people, if you're angry continually, you're, uh, you're being dominated by another power. Another kingdom, right? Anybody here? Okay. So does that mean, Pastor, if I got mad at that slowpoke on the way to church, that I was being dominated by another power? Listen, we still have an old nature that Christ says reckon it dead. That old nature tries to resurrect itself at times. Jesus has freed us and given us a new nature. There are two natures that vie against each other, but he has given us a new nature. Paul the Apostle says in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. Right there on the cross, our old nature was nailed 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on that cross. Our old nature was nailed on the cross. And we were given a new nature. Paul says, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ now lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amazing picture that what happens at rebirth when Jesus comes into us. I want to tell you, I didn't stop being a jerk to my mother by going to some self-help class. I started being honor teaching loving my mother and honoring my mother because jesus entered my heart and all of a sudden kingdom kingdom principles began to work in my life then i started feeling guilty for sin it, it doesn't mean we're sinless but it means we sin less right so christ when he comes into our life all of these things start happening and we realize i don't have to be controlled by the sinful nature any longer that's what christmas is all about He's given us victory over sin in our lives. We don't have to be dominated by sin's power. And if we have thoughts that come to us, we take authority over those thoughts. We take out our sword and we say, you get behind me, Satan. I belong to Jesus Christ. I don't have to listen to you. I'm not going to fall into your trap. We need to learn how to walk in the spirit. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Too many Christians don't walk in the spirit. They leave church. They leave their Bibles, sit on the shelves. They treat their spouse like dirt. They gossip and slander because they're not walking in the spirit. When you live in God's kingdom, you need to start living by kingdom principles. Galatians 5 you can read on your own. I'm already out of time. So much more to say. 
and the stupid game starts at 12. <laughs> Some of you, your mind's already there, checking the scores on your phone. <clears throat> we need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. I've been learning this <clears throat> since I was 12. Going on 48 years of learning how to walk in the Spirit. You listen to his voice that speaks to your heart. Sometimes you think it's your voice, right? Anyone with me? <clears throat> I tell people there's three voices you can hear. Your voice, God's voice, and Satan's voice. If you're hearing more than that, don't come and see me. <laughs> All right? Three voices you can hear. And you, you need to learn how to distinguish between those voices. <clears throat> I've heard God's voice speak to me so many different times. And there's times I thought it was my own voice and I just didn't want to listen. And there's times I was tired and just didn't care to listen or tune in. When I left the hospital the other night after praying with Nancy and Bill, walked by the waiting room and there's an older lady there sitting in the waiting room. <clears throat> I walked by her, tired, ready to go to bed, and I heard God's voice say, go and talk to that lady. I kept walking, thinking that's probably just me, trying to be spiritual. Hear the voice again, go talk to that lady. I was pressing the button, I wanted to get out of there. I was tired. Turned around and I went back, walked in the waiting room, just she and I, Trudy. I said, you have a loved one here? Yes. My husband just had open heart surgery. People go through all kinds of things, don't they? Heartache. And it's so important that you realize it's not because I'm a pastor that I went to talk to this lady. I've been doing this since I was a teenager. Okay, so God wants you to listen to his voice so you can do the same thing. And so I went back and I said, can I pray for your husband? After I heard that he was in rough shape and she said, I suppose that'd be okay. And I sensed that she wasn't probably a Christian. Probably why God said, go and talk to this woman. And so I said, do you believe in Jesus? She said, I don't know. I don't know. She said, I grew up somewhat in a Lutheran church. My husband grew up Catholic. We got married Presbyterian. And she said, I don't know what I believe. She said, when I was a young girl, my uncle was a pastor, and I remember in Michigan once, I thought maybe God might be real. And that's all she said. <clears throat> I just shared what Jesus did for me. And how I didn't really know if there was a God either, growing up in a dysfunctional home. But that I found out there is a God, and he loves us. And he cares for us. And I just shared with her what Jesus had done for me. And then I asked her, I said, Trudy, it's a faith journey. Believing in a God we don't see. Would you like to put your faith in Jesus tonight? Would you like to pray with me? And by faith receive him to be your Lord and Savior. She 
said, yes, I want to do that. And so we prayed together. And she gave her heart to Jesus that night. I went down to see her yesterday, gave her a bunch of literature, and I was able to pray with her husband in the hospital, talk to the whole family. I just want to tell you, that is what Christmas is all about. Being in God's kingdom, and he died to set us free from our sins and to make us a part of his kingdom. What a wonderful kingdom it is, isn't it? I'd like to bow your, have you bow your heads in prayer today. And as you bow your heads in prayer, you're either living in one kingdom or the other, or you're wavering. And God wants you, even as a Christian, to realize you have to start practicing kingdom principles in your life. You need to learn how to walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so right now, I just challenge you as Christians to what you've been struggling with. Right now, commit it to the Lord so he can minister to you in a special way. Just talk to him right now where you are. Talk to him about the struggles you're having. Let him know you want help. And start reading your Bible this year and start growing in that walk with God as part of his kingdom. So very important for you. Just right now, make that altar between you and God. And while you're doing that as a Christian, there might be somebody here that would say, Pastor, you know, I'm not sure if I'm even in that kingdom of light that you're talking about. I don't know if I'm a Christian. I don't know if I'd go to heaven or hell if I died. I don't know. I have good news for you. You can know. The Bible says you can know that you have eternal life. But you have to make a decision. And that decision is to put your trust in Jesus Christ. Be willing to turn from your sin and to follow him and his teachings. If you haven't done that but would say today, Pastor, I truly want to do that. I want to put my trust in Jesus right now. Just slip your hand up wherever you are. Just put it up and say, that's me. Today I want to put my trust in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. God bless you. God sees your hand, sir. God bless you as you make that commitment today. Anybody else? God bless you, man. Anybody else? We'll just give you another moment. See, as you stepped out just in that little bit of faith of putting your hand up, God saw that. He saw that. And he said, that's what Christmas is all about. I sent my son to die for your sins. And so we're going to lead you in a prayer. We'd love to have you come up after and get a Bible, have some prayer, so we can help you grow spiritually if you do that. We'll pray with you as a church family. And if maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you just say, Pastor, I want to pray that prayer. I want to make sure we'll all pray together. And let us know how we can help you afterwards. Just follow.